uh, foreign interference stuff? Yes, Olivia? especially uh, Marco Mendicino. Okay, so we'll just jump right into it. First thing, and then we'll do uh, Marco Mendicino accidentally <laughs> telling the truth. I was like, did I hear that right? I pulled the transcript. I definitely did hear it right. Okay, so first, uh, first story. RCMP demands data on ex Mountie accused of Chinese spy ties. This story is wild, especially in the context of uh, the Foreign Interference Commission, because we know they they just said it in passing, a, like a week ago, that there are two. I would call them uh, extrajudicial kidnappings, but uh, I believe the term they used was forcible repatriation of two ethnically Chinese dissidents who were Canadian citizens. They were forced back to China by Chinese spies, and I'm not sure we know what happened to them. It sounds like this Mountie might have been in that sort of vein of uh, being the guy who strong arms the local dissidents. So the RCMP believes William Maker, maybe? An ex-Mountie targeted wealthy Vancouver real estate magnate on behalf of Beijing, alleging that he helped the Chinese Ministry of Public Security, that's their spy agency, uh, to target and silence dissidents. Their public security department is the spy agency, not the public safety department that is was overseen by Bill Blair, who just shuffled around in slippers for three years, apparently. So uh, he faces potential reprimand for suspicious activities with Chinese agents after the RCMP received 78 judicial authorizations. Those are warrants for his banking, phone, and social media records on alleged foreign interference. Uh, the Globe and Mail obtained 71 unsealed authorizations from the Montreal courthouse. Jeez. Seven more are forthcoming, including allegations that have not been tested at court. A 52-page affidavit by RCMP officer Gabriel Lemaire articulating a request for Maker's financial information, his current, current and former passports, passport applications, phone records, emails, communications from LinkedIn and WhatsApp. He continues to have ongoing interactions with current and former law enforcement and private security investigation personnel over social media. They obtained collaborations with Kenneth Marsh, another former RCMP officer. Uh, this is crazy. He, yeah, so it's just, this is so shocking that this guy's a former cop. And what's concerning about this stuff is he's communicating with current police. And so that might make their communications compromised. Sheila, I kind of feel like a Floridian, you know, you, you encounter Hurricane Helene and then just when you're catching your breath, along comes Milton. I mean, when does this end? you know, in terms of the scandals. And I got to tell you. October 2025, I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Uh, if you think uh, Pierre Polyev is going to come in and in one term clean this no. up, you're dreaming in technical. We're going to have a full term of just finding where the scandals are. We have yes. to find where the bodies are hidden first before we can even fix it. You know, the conservatives have about maybe, I don't know, a generation of work ahead of them. In yeah. terms of cleaning up this mess that uh, Trudeau has done in less than a decade, I, I mean, I, I, I just feel shellacked, bombarded. It, it, it just never ends. Yeah, it's and it, it, the liberals who are on their way out the door might accidentally be telling the truth. So let's yeah. go to Marco Medicino, who was the public safety minister after the semi-retired public safety minister, Bill Blair. Uh, and Bill Blair said, I never saw the warrant, this uh, warrant regarding allegedly Michael Chan for 54 days on my desk. And so they thought, okay, well, let's compare it to the next public safety minister. What is general practice? How long does it take to get these CSIS warrants signed? And Marco Mendicino is testifying that, you know, uh, usually bickety bam, we sign them right away because uh, sometimes it affects the policing operations, which is true. He almost seemed normal until you remember he was like, let's crush the convoy protesters with tanks. <laughs> like never let that leave your mind when thinking about Marco Mendicino. So he is being questioned 
by uh, this young lawyer for the Conservative Party of Canada. Nando DeLuca wasn't there this week, which made, uh, you know, this kid's doing great work, but I just like watching Nando DeLuca. Um, but he asks um, Mendicino, like, what it, how do we let people know, like, what, what what's the process here about uh, foreign interference and letting the targets know and how do we deal with that? And just pay close attention to what he says about party leaders. <laughs> So you've spoken a bit about this already, um, but it would be correct to say that threat reduction measures include the ability for CSIS to notify members of parliament of issues concerning national security that are relevant to those members of parliament and that may necessitate action. I do, and, and just let me uh, briefly expand. The threat reduction measures that I authorized was were put into place to provide a more secure environment so that CSIS could share information about what those threats were vis-a-vis -vis the parliamentarians in question. And over time, I do think that the protocols that will be developed now that Bill C-70 has become law around sharing of information, the procedures around declassifying information can all be better deployed in the context of threat reduction measures uh, as a way of, of preventing and mitigating against any threats to um, parliamentarians and foreign interference. And so that same rule uh, or that same ability uh, would also apply to members of parliament who are leaders of a political party, correct? For sure. So just to be clear, a leader of a political party could receive a threat reduction measure briefing if CSIS believe that there are issues concerning national security that are relevant to that leader and that may necessitate action, correct? Subject to appropriate screening. And we've talked in the past about the need to ensure that before we share highly classified and sensitive information, that the individuals that are part of that dialogue are vetted according uh, to the protocols that have been put in place. And I don't think we can gloss over that fact. So yes, you're right. If you are the leader of a political party and you have become a threat, um, you I beg your pardon, you've become a target of a threat to foreign interference, then there should be a protocol in place to share information, but that may very well be subject to the appropriate screening of that individual. No, Oops. no, 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 uh, Marco <laughs> Pinocchio. I, I mean, Mendicino, I beg your pardon. You had it right the first time. For right. once in your life, you have told the truth. If you are the leader of a political party and you have become a threat, oh yeah, a threat to so many, you know, so many of the yep. fringe minority of unacceptable views. Unbelievable, uh, Sheila, he didn't collapse in convulsions for his body putting up with the truth coming out instead of a lie. I mean, Marco Mendicino, I am telling you folks, this guy is such a liar. He would such spit in your face and he would tell you it's raining, okay? That's Marco Mendicino. So, um, boy, is that not perverse irony, uh, Sheila, that uh, he had it right for a change and truthful the first time. Yeah, what a slippery eel that dude is. But yeah, it accidentally snuck out, you know, like he forgot uh, that you have to maintain that Justin Trudeau is just an innocent bystander in all of this instead of an active participant. When a party leader becomes a threat to foreign interference or a threat of foreign interference, and he's like, oh, pardon me. <laughs> no, you are not pardoned, Marco. Oh, hi, it's Ezra Levant here in Toronto with an important message because we need your help. Independent journalism in Canada is under attack. Government censors, big tech deplatformers, and the dying legacy media are all working together to maintain exclusive control on the information you receive. They don't want you to hear other voices like ours, and they really don't want you to be informed and to think for yourself. That's why the work we do here at Rebel News is so important. Our on-the-ground reporting, independent news shows, and special content you won't find anywhere else. It's all designed to give you trustworthy information and alternative viewpoints so you can decide for yourself. We don't get government money, and we are not owned by some big global conglomerate. We're funded by people just like you, so please support independent journalism and help us continue our work by subscribing 
and becoming a Rebel News Plus member today, right here on the page. Go to rebelnewsplus.com. Members get instant access to all of our shows, invitations to exclusive events, and access to our premium content like live event footage and documentaries you won't see anywhere else. Only Rebel News Plus members can join the conversation by participating in the comments section of our new website. That way you can have your say too. More than anything though, you'll be able to take pride in supporting real, honest journalism and you'll help our talented team continue to do the work to push back on the establishment. We really can use your help. We need it, in fact. So thank you and enjoy Rebel News Plus.